Ladies and gentlemen, it is 2.23 a.m. October 9th. I am Star-Lord, New Thor 7, your planetary defense commander. And I'm on the night shift. For the people in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and the Gulf Coast. And we are watching Hurricane Michael. Because this is going to be a big old nasty storm. Unless a miracle happens. Now, the good news is the eye wall has not closed off yet. See there? Although it shows signs, but it is still intensifying. We are up to, I think it was 75 knots, the base speed, which would be, I think, around 85, 90 miles an hour. But it still has 40 hours to intensify, and it's going into an area that is going to be low on shear because it's getting it's been getting sheared to hell like it was a lamb is that a good joke and then the waters are bathtub hot and then the dry air situation I don't think is going to be in prohibitive inhibitive whichever inhibitive you want to use um and that looks like a dragon Godzilla thingy so add points to that and I have no idea how this moisture situation is going to affect this moisture situation, but adding any more moisture to the East Coast is going to be more problematic than it was already problematically is. But as you can see here in the water vapor loop, <clears throat> the storm itself looks to be about as big as Florida, <clears throat> and it's multi-pronged. The green is the thickest of the moisture. So you got a moisture area there, a moisture area here, moisture area here, and then another secondary moisture area blowing up and headed north east so i told you this is this is like a monster storm from a monster movie and if she gets her act together over the next 40 hours it especially needs to be watched when the sun is out because everything gets hotter with the sun then i yeah i need people to make up their minds about whether or not they want to stay and i want to warn you this is not old school 2012 weather it's 2018 weather and so I know coastal people can be stubborn at times, but there are no tra traffic jams anywhere I can see. So if it, you know, for the next 10 hours, 20 hours, 15, you should have a pretty open evacuation zone. And now this system here is the one that is Hurricane Michael. <clears throat> like I said, it's got secondary moisture all around it. You've got Hurricane Sergio here. So we're about to get double penetrated from two hurricanes, the North American continent. And then you have a giant system blowing up over the United States. And you got an upside down dragon head spewing shit. And then you have a new wave rolling off of Africa that is bigger than all of them so far that we've seen and so we have Leslie who models have shown let me show you something uh, I hope you're an adult and can handle stuff uh, I won't freak you out here we go might take me a second to find it how are you doing but yeah if this storm gets bad and you are in the evacuation areas definitely evacuate where to go? Take a break from thinking about weather. Um, here, all right. This is not a forecast. This is entertainment value brought to us by Philip Pappen. But he was showing the, you know, this is like everybody gets mad when you even show 384 data. But this is interesting to watch because we like to be prepared for worst case scenarios. And Hurricane Leslie's just been kind of kicking like three weeks and so this one has hurricane leslie bouncing back and it isn't the first time models have showed that i'm not saying that's going to happen but i'm saying it's a possibility so nobody knows what the damn storm is doing it's got a mind of its own and it's stubborn and it's just out there swimming with all the highs and lows and like nothing can kill it not that i want it to die i don't want anything to die 
Anyway, in the UK, you're getting slammed too, but so I would guess we're definitely going to get hit with at least one more hurricane before the season is out. That's my honest assessment, and my assessments up to date have been pretty good. So these are interesting times indeed. And um, now we'll run down. This is the NAM, which shows near landfall around 5 a.m. on Wednesday, which would, the actual landfall part would be 9 a.m., I think it's what the eye hole crosses, but I would, to me, the damage, like when you need to be out of there is when, so you got till about 10 a.m. And this would bring, these are wind gusts, I think, yeah. High wind gusts of like 122, 134. Pretty sure you're going to see 100 mile per hour winds because in one of these model runs, it has it getting all the way up to the coast without having a full eye, which I thought was weird. And I wanted to show here, these are the wind fields. So that is Sergio, and that is Michael. And then what the hell is going on up here? That is Leslie. See what I'm saying? Like, this is not normal. She extends all the way into whatever pattern that is. And it's like I talk about on the alignment pattern. One, two, three bodies. Almost like planetary bodies. And so, and then if you notice the wind field here, this is today right now. And the wind field here. So this is Leslie as she's for, I mean, sorry, Michael as is forming. And then look at the winds up here. 43, 45. I mean, so it's just weird that the whole wind field right now is extending that far in. And that this is the GFS. It shows... The wind speed being like 61. This is like best case scenario. That like the 60, 61. And then this is at 137 on the euro. And this would put it there at about noon on Wednesday. So you have about 30, 35 hours. My math might be really wrong though. And so <clears throat> if we get, I mean, if she starts to really intensify, I am telling you, if it is a category four, if it somehow gets to a category four and it has a chance. Right now everybody thinks it's gonna be category three, but a hundred hundred twenty mile per hour winds. But if it does go to cat if it even looks like it's going to cat four, you you don't want to be in the area, I do not think. Pretty sure. So, you know, it's it's up to you to figure out what you're gonna do, where you're gonna go. I just try to offer you data to add to your set. But see, here's the GFS in this rain situation would be very bad. I've seen some, you know, the most rain I, the media was saying was like five inches. And I'm like, dude, this is going to be way more than five inches. And so we are watching right now. It is still, it's hard to say, that, but it's definitely a better case scenario that the eye has not fully formed because then rapid intensification would be the get go. But I don't think. Um, it is in its best environment to strengthen. So, you know, right now, these are the hurricane warnings and watches. And that if you live along the coast, I would say, I don't know, 10 miles in. All like I would just keep watching out because, I mean, the, that's a giant storm. And so, with the wind field ahead of it, these waves are going to be rocking. And, uh, so we will have to continue to monitor it. But that's what I'm doing. But yeah, it's going to be affecting. And then here's the storm. And he's even wearing like a little goggle mask. Is that like a caterpillar with a goggle mask? A centipede sunglasses and then and the river flooding I mean the whole east coast has already had tons and tons and tons of rain almost all year and then I, one other thing I'm going to show you guys in case you're new to this hurricane and obsessing about it how are you doing as I remind people it pretty much maintains hurricane strength as it goes along the coast and look at this 
Rain Man, the red right there, red is bad. Red is very, like, floody, super floody. So if that goes too high, like, it can go up into New York and Massachusetts. But this is a monster storm. Like, I, I can't remember seeing a storm this big in this. This is the most boss level of the Quetzalcoatl storm where a low meets up with the front. So we need to treat it like it's boss level. And like this is going to like majorly hit South Carolina, North Carolina, if this map and trend continues at hurricane strength. Category 1, but still that area does not need any more rain, does not need any more trouble. <clears throat> and then it has it, so not only does Sergio hit like what? Sergio hits boom and then and then another one hits boom. And remember, Japan got hit by nine typhoons this year, I believe. And so the pattern has shifted to us now. And so I don't think hurricane season will end. I mean, officially hurricane season doesn't end to the end of November, but I think we're going to continue to see what the hell is that? hurricanes and low pressure systems for at least another month so we're gonna have a, another month of this fun <clears throat> doesn't that sound great though and we're on severe weather alert all month of October see there's one there there's one there there's one there there's one there it's like a pattern man it's just like a pattern and it looks like all together, there's a lot of low pressure all around the volcano range. There's the volcano range, man. Isn't that interesting? And the Mexican popical volcano has been going off like crazy all month. You had a 5-9 earthquake here. The Galapagos Islands volcanoes erupted this year. You had Hawaii. Yeah, so i do a little matrix for you. Because sometimes, I think, Science talks about carbon way too much. It affects things, but not it's not the be-all end-all. Volcanoes matter too. All right, so you have the volcanoes in Hawaii, and then you have the Babacoto volcano here, and then you have the Guatemala volcano here, and these have all erupted within the last year. And you have the Babacoto. I mean, I'm sorry, the Galapagos Islands volcanoes here, and these have all erupted in the last year, which adds more heat to the oceans and instability to the upper air and um, there are dormant volcanoes in the Caribbean and so with the 5-9 <coughs> there's a chance we can see volcano eruption in the Caribbean I would guess and I would say the there's a high chance we could see an east coast earthquake I don't want to freak anybody out so I'm giving you guys too much information I would say with this set, set up, and we are watching for earth, earthquakes now because of the solar wind that, you know, who knows what's going on, but I would say these four patterns here, carbon aren't causing these four in a row like this. Car, carbon is not causing us to see what a repetition of it, what looks like four bodies rotating on an ecliptic, okay? It's just the way it is. And so... It's going to be an interesting month. But these are interesting times. You knew that. I don't have to tell you. This is total parsipital water. As you can see, there's a lot of moisture everywhere. We want another thing. I'm talking way too long. I guess I like talking to you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you went from a, a really attractive lady to a puppy. You're so talented. Um, somebody might be like, man, I don't like you. And I'd be like, you know what? I bet you don't. I bet you like to not like a lot of people. That's your thing. So that's cool. I'll probably live. See, there's a giant major storm. There's our storm front. Right there. And that thing is nasty. And then there, that, some of the precipitation, the, the hurricane, yeah, there's going to be a lot of rain with that. 
But so that is going to hook up with that. See, that is the whole process. Carbon is not causing this process to continually happen again and again and again. And I get over there, the carbon hurdle. It's a hurdle for all of us, really. I mean, we all have to adjust and adjust, adjust and adapt to these earth weather changes. Um, together. But we can't just think that carbon is the only solution to everything. But yeah, these are the aquatic auroras on October 7th. Because <clears throat> our sun is changing. Now, trust, the sun's the reason the weather's weird, man. You know, that's just, that's what I believe to be true 100%. The sun is the main reason the weather's acting weird. Because when the sun acts weird, earth weather acts weird, and people act weird. And so the solar, the auroras have just been crazy, like nonstop for almost three months straight. And so the sun is pouring a lot of earth in into our planet. And then it goes into the auroras and into the core and that's how planets grow the more you learn so you're getting hit by the coronal whole wind stream from here from a few days ago so it's all very interesting and here is your update i'll be back in a couple of hours everybody stay cool and get out of town get out of dodge if you need to man